Well, let's get a doctor's advice on this. And Dr. Gio Maletto joins us now, a travel medicine specialist. And you have patients coming into your practice in Vancouver asking for advice on this. Yeah, every single day we're getting a, a few patients that are worried about the destinations they're going to where Zika appears to be a problem. So. And what are you telling them? Well, the advice we're giving them is essentially pregnant women should really reconsider travel plans to these areas. Uh, there appears to be a high risk of catching Zika and getting the fetal abnormality microencephaly. So while the causation hasn't been definitively proven, it's definitely suspicious for it. So unless travel is really essential, we would recommend avoiding it in those cases. What kind of reaction do you get from patients when you say, look, I, I think it's in your best interest not to go at all? It's difficult for some people. You know, this might be a holiday they've been planning for the past couple of years. It could be a very crucial business trip to visit uh, friends and family who are in an emergency. So it's very difficult to, to take that advice. And some people will choose to travel. And if that's the case, then one of the things we would say is take insect precautions. So specifically, this is a daytime biting mosquito, a mosquito that spreads this virus specifically bites during the day. Unlike the malaria mosquito that bites at night, dusk and dawn, this is a daytime biter. And so stay indoors, uh, make sure you have AC, close the windows, use netting on the windows, and use bug spray as well, uh, which goes straight on the skin as a protection. Even in pregnancy, it's safe to do that. Uh, and we'd recommend also wearing long sleeves uh, and long pants and, and, and not exposing skin. As you go through that advice, you know, it's easy to sit in a doctor's office in Canada and nod and say, yes, absolutely, I'll do all those things. It doesn't sound like it's that achievable once you're in one of the countries that's potentially affected. Um, well, I mean, most of these products and precautions don't require any special uh, uh, kind of prescription. But I mean, staying inside and, you know, in the right. height of the day. Well, I mean, for example, if you're a business traveler mm -hmm. and uh, you can, uh, you know, you'll be in an office building that's got AC, then you're significantly reducing your risk uh, during the day. Mm -hmm. So it does depend a little bit on, on what travel plans people have. If they're doing adventure travel while pregnant, that would be risky. And mm -hmm. I'd probably advise them not to go. More broadly speaking, as we hear these stories, and this is something that's new to to a lot of Canadians. We, others in other parts of the world have been living with this. We, many of us have just heard of it. How concerned are you, broadly speaking? It's a pandemic. I'm very concerned. The, the number of cases in Brazil alone have gone up tenfold. All right, so this is a pandemic throughout uh, the Americas, and it's very concerning. People don't have immunity. That's why it's spreading. Uh, and at the moment, uh, you know, Canada seems to not be affected, but there have been some cases in the States. And so it, it is a great concern about getting this under control to make sure it doesn't spread. And so I'm sure a lot of people have asked you, what about a vaccine? Why don't we just have a shot we can take and would be OK? If it was that easy, unfortunately, the development of the vaccine takes time. And I know Sanofi uh, are looking at tweaking maybe a, a, a vaccine that they've developed for dengue fever, which is a very similar kind of a virus. But I mean, that's no way a short term fix. And that's a really medium to long term thing. So insect precautions and avoidance are, 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 the, are the mainstay of treatment right now. And in a strange way, perhaps suddenly that North America is engaged in this issue, that might be enough to spur more work on a vaccine, unfortunately, unfortunately. Well, you're right. I mean, hopefully we've learned from Ebola so that the response is more quick. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Ebola, I mean, there were people working on vaccines and, and, and still are. But really, it was good public health measures and early intervention by NGOs and other governmental organizations that, that restricted the spread of that disease. So hopefully we'll see early intervention in the case of Zika. Dr. Maletto, really nice talking to you. Thank you.